Hello, Therapy Talkers. It is Pauline, one of your favorite therapists. And I had the opportunity to do something really cool this summer. One of my favorite things I did this summer. And so I'm going to introduce this video in this way because, well, we just kind of started talking <laughs> as soon as we turned on the camera. So I had the opportunity to interview two of my friends. We met at the gym and it's Nicole and Sarah. They're two medical professionals. And Nicole is, uh, she's an LPN and also a nursing student. And Sarah is a hospitalist. And I got to hear about their experience. Like how often do you actually like stop to ask um, your medical professional friends or strangers how their experience has been in the past few years? So I got this opportunity and through us just talking after workouts and having small talks here and there, I asked them one morning if, if it would be okay if we sat down and kind of talked more about what their experiences has been, some of their challenges, some of their struggles. So in this half of the interview, you get to hear how they started, what they've been dealing with, the challenges, the barriers, and some of the things they actually appreciate about their jobs and the patients that they work with and how they strive to promote teaching and adv advocacy to their um, patients as well. So enjoy. All right. So I have some questions for y'all. But before we start, what are your names? <laughs> I'm Nicole. <laughs> Nicole. And, I'm Sarah. and you're Sarah. Okay. All right. So, Nicole, how long have you been working in this field and what do you actually do? Uh, so I'm an LPN and a nursing student right now. I started off as a CNA in 2009 and have stair-stepped my way up to where I'm at today. So it's been about 15-ish years, if almost. 10. It, wow. Yeah. I, I did not know that. Yeah. So I started okay. at the bottom and worked all where I'm at today. And you're still working? Yep. Okay. And then what about you? What do you do and how long have you done it for? I work currently as a hospitalist and I am an advanced practice nurse, which means I've gone through a master's level education and got a clinical master's um, and have sat for boards to treat adults, essentially. And um, a hospitalist is internal medicine in the hospital. I've done that for almost 14 years. And then um, I was a nurse before that for a few years, and then I was a CNA before that, and I was a surgical tech before that. So as an advanced practice nurse, it's been a while. So the better part of two decades. Why? <laughs> Both of you, why? What motivated you to be in this field for as long as you've been in? That's a combination of what, 40, no, 35 years. Um, I love nursing. You love nursing. It is one of the things I'm actually passionate about, and I'm oddly good at it. And it just works so well with my brain, and that processing of how the human body works has just come super natural to me. And it is something that I just love doing about you what do you love about it's, your job it was kind of a multitude because I actually went to school to go into marine biology do you remember that and then I went back <laughs> to school to go into a healthcare type field and um, I really liked I wanted my goal is I wanted a career that I could continually learn but that also would challenge me intellectually but also would provide a work-life balance that I was looking for. And so I picked nursing because it just seemed to fit. It, I actually applied and started looking at going to medical school, but I really liked the nursing uh, theory, the nursing philosophy compared to the med, like med school mm -hmm. philosophy and ended up choosing nursing. Cause then I essentially do what a doctor does in the hospital right now. So, mm. but I get, the nursing model instead which is more holistic um, okay compared to 
the medical model, which is you have a disease and you fix it. So the nursing model has that as part of it, but we're able to look at, okay, so well, why is this person coming to the hospital? They're not taking their meds. Why aren't they taking their meds? The nursing model helps to kind of promote that holistic approach. Okay, so you dig deeper as a nurse versus um, being a doctor. Essentially. Essentially, okay. We're taught to identify the barriers of why they're not doing what they're Man. supposed to be doing. Okay. And I don't think that it's fair to say that they, physicians don't dig deep, mm -hmm. but it has comes down to the training. So a physician training is not going to tell them and teach them to look at a holistic approach. They mm. gradually learn that with time as they start practicing, whereas a nursing approach is much more holistic in the training and the foundations. Okay. I think in some ways nursing is very similar to mental health mm -hmm. as far as like, or therapists, as far as like, we can't, we know we go into the job knowing we can't fix anyone's issues or problems, but really we want to find out like stuck point or what, what are barriers that keep you from, let's say if you have social anxiety, what, what keeps you from doing that and working through that and digging deep to actually find right. the cause versus let's just like keep you away from people and right. solve that problem. Well, and also uh, you have to provide the education to the patient of, okay, well, here's what I see is happening. Do you see how this is affecting X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, it's kind of almost kind of conjunction with that therapist role of you have to help them, you have to meet them where they're at and help them see, well, if I change this behavior, my life will be changed in X, Y, and Z way. Okay. And I think nursing is the ones, like she said, that do the education. Like, I find one of the things that I feel that I do well to help people is I'm able to explain something that's highly technical, medical, mm. on a disease process, but explain it to where I'm not talking over that person. Oh, man. To where they know... They can understand it for themselves, a non-medical person, yeah. and make an informed decision. And I feel like that's a huge gift that you can give people. Absolutely. Um, and I think that nurses do that. Whether you do what I do, whether you're, uh, you know, you work the floor or like Nicole, um, I think that's a huge thing that nursing gives to society. Yeah, and that's really helpful because I know I've met with clients and sometimes they'll come in with medical issues that they haven't really attended to and as like um, a therapist we need to rule out medical stuff yeah and so it's about having that conversation and also like finding out well my experience with a physician was this this and that and so I don't really go anymore but it's also like well it's not all of them. You got to give it another chance and hopefully they meet people like yeah. both of you. Well, and in that scenario, a lot of people don't understand how that process works. Okay. Is that if you go to an office, they think, well, I'm stuck with that, that provider because mm -hmm. I'm a tag to that provider. You no. Know, yes. You can see anybody in that clinic and see if you have an, can establish a relationship within that clinic. Mm. And it just comes down to of having a conversation of, hey, I connect with you better. You listen to me. This is what I, and then they can make that decision and you can make a provider patient agreement of, okay, I'm going to take you on yeah. and we're going to go forward with that. I think that's really helpful to know that you don't have to be stuck with right. the person that you mm -hmm. don't choose. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, next question. What do you appreciate the most about what you do? Um, I appreciate, like, one thing that makes my day is if you have that one person who comes in, like, I work in an urgent care clinic right now, and they are coming in not on their best day. Mm. And that being able to make them have such a pleasurable experience, and the patient's part of that, of creating that pleasurable experience of they're open, they're willing to listen, mm -hmm. they're when I ask questions, they're able to give me the answers that I need. And it's a it's a relationship that you have to create and that just they're like, when they leave and they're like, you were amazing, you were so awesome. I'm like, my day is so much better just because due to this one thing, it, that sets my day up to be amazing. That experience. Mm -hmm. Man. 
What about you? I like teaching and I like to, whether it's the patient or a nurse that I'm working with, um, I think if you can help somebody to understand why you're doing something mm -hmm. and what you're doing. I mean, I work in the hospital, so everybody's super sick. Um, and I think trying to see that whole picture where, you know, would their family want to be updated? Can they not explain it to their family? You know, like oh. all different layers. And, yeah. Um, many times what I deal with is people coming in and they're super sick and nobody's told them that they have all of these really advanced chronic diseases and mm. I don't sugarcoat it and I tell them like look you know you've got multiple organs failing you're not gonna live forever yeah. and being honest about that where a lot of people will just let it just slide because it's easier not to talk about it but right. having honest conversations with people about what is going on I think all those things that you two mentioned are very important um, and sometimes I do get to hear the pleasant experiences of you know going to see my my provider and this is what happened or even um, some clients I have that are like caretakers for their family members mm -hmm. whether it's because um, of language barrier um, they're very they're either like frustrated with how their family members being treated or they're really um, appreciative or excited about how like yeah. things were explained to them. So some, it could be a multiple of things, but we get to hear all of it too. Yeah. Yeah. And teaching is everything. Yeah. Well, you, as like it comes back to like the nursing model is you're trying to teach that patient mm -hmm. not to mm -hmm. get back into the hospital to urgent care. Keeping so them you're out. trying to keep them out of those scenarios. That makes sense. Yeah, because if they're not learning how to, like, not hurt themselves or if they're yeah. learning how to take care of themselves and that limits the amount of maybe, like, not work for you guys, but more so, like, seeing them frequently. Or they're just going to fail. Or they're going to fail. You know, like, somebody gets diagnosed with diabetes. That's a huge diagnosis. Okay. You know, and they come in and they get diagnosed with new onset diabetes. I mean, I can't imagine... If somebody's never had to track their carbs, they've never had to do a diabetic diet, and then we're giving them medications, they've got to check their blood sugar, they've mm -hmm. got to watch for this, and so all these different things, like, that can be completely overwhelming, and you're trying to teach them, like, for me, they're in the hospital, so they're sick, and they don't feel good, and you have to expect that they understand it all, and mm -hmm. so it's just that repetition that... I think that nursing can provide them and try and give them handouts or figure out what works on their level, whether it's they're a tech person, you yeah. tell them about something techy, or if they're not, you know, something that they can write down, you know, you yes. can get on the... Or give them pictures so they can Exactly, you get on the steps. wavelength on what would be helpful to them. So you're learning, you're not only teaching them, but you're also learning them yes. as far as like what works for them, their language. Um, wow. My heart is like, I'm, I'm feeling fuzzy <laughs> in a good way. There's a lot, like, I think a lot of people don't understand how much social work nursing that you do. Does. Yeah. And that, you know, they come in on the hospital basis or they have urgent care and they, you know, haven't seen their PCP in a while. And we're doing that backlog of, okay, well, let's get them an appointment on the books of, so we're trying to set them up for success. If they go, great. If they don't, then we've done what we can to help mm -hmm. them in that, at that aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds very similar to yeah. what I do, mm -hmm. honestly. And like in the hospital, <laughs> we have, it's a, a multidisciplinary approach. I mean, so you have your provider, you've got the therapist, we have nutrition, dietary, social work, mm -hmm. care management. We have all of these people that, you know, meet to try and kind of get everybody on the same page and figure out what is the best option for the individual. Okay. Well, let's go back in time a bit. So the past, there's a pandemic still going on, right? Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. Some of us it don't believe real. that it's real, but y'all can vouch. You are medical professionals and it's real. Yes. Um, so let's go back in time a bit. The year is 2020. Tell me how your life changed. I started off in a clinic that we shut down. We did telephone visits and 
we didn't have patients coming in because I worked with the geriatric community. We had patients who wouldn't leave their house. Mm. We were trying to get them to, they were having serious medical problems, trying to get them to go in and get help, and they wouldn't because they were terrified that they were gonna die because they're a high risk group. Halfway th a year into the pandemic, I switched to urgent care and then I was in contact with COVID every single day because we do all of the swabbing for the community, uh, a lot of the swabbing for the community. And it was an eye opener of what people, one, were terrified and what were coming through the lines and um, and having to troubleshoot that and people weren't aren't nice when it comes to because it's a very invasive they feel it's a very invasive test of how how to get tested and you are massively belittled when you're COVID testing but it's such an important thing like without those tests we can't do a lot aren't allowed to at least some of us were very like mm -hmm. You needed to get tested. Huh, okay. I think we'll talk a little bit more about that. What? How did your life change? 2020. So, basically, I had to isolate myself from everybody. Okay. I stopped going to the gym for over a year. Yeah, um, I, I recall that. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was mainly because I didn't want to have it on my conscience that I got somebody that I know, a friend sick, and I also didn't, couldn't risk myself getting sick. And so almost everybody that I worked with, we all stayed home and we didn't do anything um, for the better part of a year. And I dealt with the beginning of the pandemic and still do. Um, we took a heavy toll with all of the COVID patients. We were super understaffed. We didn't have supplies. Um, nobody knew what it was, so it was scary. Yeah. Um, thankfully, my group is pretty organized, and so we started stockpiling masks and supplies for our group. Um, but it was very scary, and it was also kind of cool to re see how fast the studies were coming out. Like, every day, I was having to read new articles and get updated on guidelines. I mean, we were, mm. like, that was, it was literally every day. Yeah, every day. To stay up on how to manage COVID. And then um, the other thing was, so we were dealing with such sick people and there was no ICU beds. And so we were managing them on the floor. People that would normally be in the ICU like hours earlier, we were dealing with on the floor and that has changed kind of the culture now in the hospital to where we have very, very sick people on the floor. So when you say floor, like what do you a mean? General, a general ward. So okay. a hospital, you have your general ward, then you might have a little bit higher up, which is a cardiac unit. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have a step down, which is like uh, the room next to the ICU. Okay. And then you have the ICU. And the ICU, it got to a point to where everybody was on a ventilator. They had it overflowing into our step down unit. We even started um, opening up more units on the floor to where we could handle some of the non-intubated patients that were more acute. Um, so it was it was interesting. It was a lot of work. It was also very scary. Um, I have seen people suffocate on air in front of me oh, with the beginning surges of COVID. Yeah. Wow. So it was a lot of different emotions. Absolutely. And I like, as we talked about earlier, having to like teach um, your patients, even their family and like um, talk to them about what they're dealing with. And that how, was the hardest part. Okay. They yeah. couldn't be there. Okay. And the family so members couldn't be there. Nobody, nobody could come into the hospital. Um, and so you had these people, you know, and you call on the phone, but that's not the same no. as having them sit there with their loved ones. And so you have that separation where nobody can visit, nobody can be there, and you're having to do everything over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, they tried to limit how much staff was allowed in the rooms, and so we would, excuse me, have to do you know, our interactions with the patient over the phone, the nurses would do that. Like, so this poor patient is just sitting there alone in the room. 
24 hours a day for the mm. most part because we're trying to do everything electronically because nobody knew about right. this airborne disease. And so the patients were completely isolated and alone. Wow. And you were having to deal with people who were frustrated because you're getting tested. Oh, you get those in the hospital too. We in have, the hospital as well. It okay. was unfortunately very politicized. Okay. Um, and towards, in the beginning, it, it wasn't as bad, but mm -hmm. once the vaccines came out, then it was very politicized and the people that were being hospitalized who were critically ill were the ones that didn't get vaccinated. And they usually were very verbally abusive about it and had their own ideas, which everybody can have that, but totally. You know, it's one thing, it's kind of, you know, a, being a hypocrite coming to the hospital for help and then challenging it. Yeah, it's very, it, it definitely has been an interesting thing because vaccines are not a new thing. It's always been there, right? And I think we can have a whole hour conversation about this. Yes. But yeah, I would say um, the past couple of years for me as a therapist has been the hardest I've ever had to work. Um, and also it's a weird and interesting thing because being like some experience, like you're experiencing the same thing your client or even patient is experiencing. Like we're all going through the same yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Bizarre. But they also, there's people who can't sit there and be like, okay, you're going through this. And they, there's no way, they can't understand where we're coming from and we're trying best to understand where they're coming from, mm -hmm. but we're hitting this roadblock and you're frustrated and we all do best to try not to show the patient our frustration and, but you can only, you, you only can take so much before that frustration comes mm -hmm. out in front it of the builds. patient. And I think a lot of what I heard among my coworkers it was once the vaccines came out and all of these people who were just completely anti that it's like so you're not helping the community by not mm. getting vaccinated you're making it harder and you're making other people more at risk because you're choosing not to get vaccinated and then now all of a sudden that's our problem mm. and we have to help you and you're not being nice about it so many layers of so many layers like just so many layers of it but hmm. and that was a huge thing that I know a lot of people had to deal with is you know we want to help you right that's our nature right and but yet we're having to fight you to help you and it's something that could have been prevented absolutely aside from the challenges that y'all have already talked about do you find that there's more challenges that may be out there or even like fast forward to now like are there still are the challenges that you've already mentioned still oh, yeah. the same for me i don't know about you but for me every new wave like it's just been a new challenge a new thing okay right now um and it's a consequence of the pandemic the vaccine mandates and all of those different things we're in a huge staffing crisis and okay. and so even though we haven't had the huge surges like some of the past COVID surges, the hospital is shutting down like they did during the pandemic because we don't have anybody to care for people. It's like they, you, well, you did this during the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Why can't you do it now? Well, we all banded together because we didn't know what was going on. So right. we were already hands on board, like let's help people that are sick because that's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. And now it's, okay, well, you did that, so now you have, that's the new normal. But you were in crisis mode. But now that's the new normal. Oh, no way. No. No. That's essentially how it is. So it, how, do you, how do you deal with being in that? That sounds, well, one is crisis, one it's pressure. How do you manage that? It's hard. It's like, and in the process of everything, I don't know how you feel about it, is we had a nurse in a different state who got criminally charged for a med error. Mm. Granted, it was a massive med error, but that, if, that shook me to my core because 
we deal with meds every single day. Mm. We deal with tons of medications, tons of patients, and having to keep we keep those straight. But there's yeah. very uh, there's a lot of opportunity that a mistake will happen, and it is scary with me because I'm pursuing more education of well, am I gonna go to jail? because I made a mistake. Right. It was a harmless mistake. And she owned up to it from the time that she found out that it happened. And they, they charged her criminally for homicide. That's pretty severe. So, like, me being a younger nurse mm-hmm. and continuing to go forward, I felt like it was a huge attack on all of us. Right. Is it, I mean, so are they... We're human, and we cannot be perfect in what we do, and when we make mistakes. Nurses have to be perfect. You're going to okay. be penalized now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it, that, I really did not like it, and it made me think twice, because my role's a little bit different. I don't pass meds. I order the meds. Okay. But I also am a little bit more aware to where I don't... Um, you know, give the nurse an order verbally. I always try and make sure to put it in myself. Yeah. Um, and verify with them a couple times. And if it is an emergency situation, then they'll like look at the med with me together and we're like, yeah, that's okay. I agree. Um, I agree. So, but it's just, I don't know. I feel like people are turning against each other um, to get the bottom line everybody is in all of the admin is in this financial issues and so they want to streamline things and then they're putting um different specialties against each other like nursing against therapy and they're like losing that the patient is at center here why we come to work is for the patient not for the bottom line and Mm. there's a lot of that patient safety should be your core concern Mm mm-hmm and I I don't feel patient safety is a core concern for others. For others. Profit is the core concern. There's too much admin. Yeah. Too ma- many people that are away from the bedside that don't really know what the trenches are and... But make the decisions. Correct. Makes no sense. Makes no sense whatsoever and there's not an open line of communication of like hey this is what's going on like Mm -hmm. this is how I can see we can fix it there's there's no communication it is we try I mean I've tried reaching out and like my manager will listen and she will try but it's a one line streamlined down it's not a two-way street of working together to put the patient in the center of what we're trying to do Mm -hmm. So then who gets, um, who gets the short end of the stick? The patient. The patient. I will say though, that's why our group unionized. So is so that we have more of a united front and I've never had any experience with unions until here. And it really is kind of cool. Like we're all able to band together for a unified voice and we are able to help kind of, I don't want to say make things better, but affect change, basically. Yeah. And with the idea of patient care. And okay. like, I know our doctors are trying to unionize, and they, like, I've had open conversations with them, and not once did they ever bring up pay. All of the reason of why they're doing it is patient safety. Mm-hmm. Is the core reason behind it. Yeah. Is patient safety. And that's what's frustrating about it is that you are getting pushed against the wall Mm -hmm. because you're trying to fight for what you're called to do but you find roadblocks yeah which is I mean I would say that would wear me out burn me out pretty fast when like y'all started with this when we started with this conversation you talked about well we try to get to the bottom of things for the patients is to like 
learn what's causing the issue teach them like the different things and so you get to that space where you've done all this teaching and learning about each other and then you are met with these roadblocks that keep you from doing it doing it yeah yeah like I one of the best I saw a TED talk and I wish I remembered her name but it was a nurse and she said pretty much if you worked at Google Amazon any of these high-tech places, if you were in an innovator of going around and trying to figure out how something worked better you would be praised in nursing we're giving these protocols you have to figure out if you do not follow that protocol mm -hmm. and you innovate on how to make it better you can get penalized for not following that protocol. Right. Because you're going to be sticking out. You're going against everything else. That's awful. 